So in the previous lecture, uh, we described a variety of topological spaces. Well, first we defined a topological space. And all a topological space is is, a, is some set and a collection of subsets of that set, which we call the open sets. And then we described a number of topological spaces. We described the set of topological spaces on three objects. The first one we described is this one, which uh, we associated with Simo Heha, the greatest sniper of all time. And the topological space, if you drew it at its simplest level, just looks like this. It's three isolated points. Then we started, we considered a less precise marksman, and um, he wasn't able to isolate A or B, or, well, he was able to isolate B, but he wasn't able to isolate A or C. And um, if you draw it as a cartoon, that means that he has three points, A, B, and C, but he can't really split apart um, he can't split apart them completely, although he can he can split apart uh, A and C. So he gets a topological space that looks like this, a little less connected. But if you confuse Homer by putting him on a, a turnstile and getting him drunk, um, everything seems to be hard to isolate from each other, and you get this topological space here, which is three points connected. And, and the, the set of open sets is given by these two sets. Okay, you, you will probably not see these as examples in any decent class on topology. <laughs> uh, what they will do is immediately go to the ones that are practical. And the, the most important one is the real line of the real line. Well, first, first this step one is we, do, we have to define an open interval definition. Uh, an open interval of R is a set that looks like this. So here's, here's the real number line. And then you can choose two points on it, A and B. And then you can consider the set of points on the interior. OK, this thing is an open interval. And we call it, we denote it this way. And it's basically all the points from A to B that do not include A or B. So basically, all numbers such that x is less than b and greater than a. Okay, two, the set of open sets on R is the set of unions of open intervals. So basically, it's it's sets that look like this. It's it's sets that look like uh you know they're they're collections of, of open intervals, so they're sets that look like this on the real line. So let's just check that this is a topology. So uh, to check that it's a topology, we have to remember what a topology is. So just to remember, here's our paper from before. A topology is a set X with a collection of subsets O, such that if you take Intersections, you stay, you get an open set. If you take infinite unions, you get an open set. And the entire space and the empty set are in O. So let's check the first one. Let's take two, uh, two open intervals, A, B, C, D. Two open intervals. These are both open sets in R. If you take the intersection of A, B, intersection C, D, if C is greater than B, well, OK, let's draw it, A, B, and then you have C, D, D. OK, and we see they, they intersect here. So this is the interval from C to B. So we see the intersection of A, B with C, D is just the open interval from C to B. And this is also in O. Oh, the first one is satisfied. The second one is satisfied almost by observation. We'll just, we'll just do it for two open intervals. A, B, union, C, D. Sorry. A, B, union, C, D uh, is a union of open intervals, so it's open. If we take an infinite union, yeah, let's call this A1, B1, A2, B2, dot, 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 A, N, B, N, union, dot, 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 infinity, you'll just get an infinite union of open intervals. By assumption, we assume that this thing would be open. This, this second requirement is satisfied by construction. And then we assume this to hold. We assume 
uh, in this case x is the reals and this is an open interval by assumption and then this is an open interval by assumption in some stupid way. So we see that the set of open intervals and unions of them uh, forms a topology for the reals. Another topology, another uh, space we could consider is the circle. And the circle, which we'll call S1, is equal to the set of uh, points in the plane such that uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Okay, And we can define a topology on the unit circle the same way we do on R. We, we, we define a set of open intervals, say. So we say, that, like, and that those are sets that look like this, basically all the points between this point and this point that don't include the boundary points. And, and the set of unions of these open intervals, this forms the topology on the circle. Okay, and it's, it's awfully similar. The, the big uh, reason to care about topology is it gives us the definition of continuous function for spaces where defining continuous might otherwise be more difficult. So let's do a definition. Let M O M and N O N be topological spaces. Let F map M to N. We call F continuous if F inverse U is open for any U which is open in N. In other words, F inverse U is in OM for any U in ON. Okay, so this does not look like what we normally think of when we think of things as being continuous, but let's just double check that it works for the real line. So let's consider M equals the real line and N equals the real line also. And let's consider the function F of X equals X cubed. Okay, this is a continuous function, right? If you graph it, it looks continuous. Here's X, here's Y. If you graph a point, you get something that looks like this. Anyway, this looks continuous, this function here, right? Um, let's just check, it is. So take an open interval here. So F inverse of the open interval from, from uh, A to B. Uh, what you'll get is another open interval. You'll get the open interval from the cube root of A all the way to the cube root of B. Okay, the point is that this is another open interval, therefore it's an open set in the reals. And this guy here, this is uh, an open set on the reals, so this is also in open sets on N. So F inverse maps open sets in N to open sets in M. So this is a simple example that shows, you know, it's a sanity check basically, and it shows this definition of continuous uh, is consistent with how we usually think of continuous. But what does it mean at a deeper level? So it, I mean, it's roughly as follows. Let's go to, back to the general case. We have a map F, which takes M into N, which means that um, F inverse, even if F is not invertible, the inverse is defined on sets. It'll take open sets in N to open sets in M. If, if F is continuous, it'll take it to open sets in M. Uh, if uh, we're asking whether it's continuous and we don't know yet, all we know is that it'll take it to sets in M. And the definition that is continuous says that you know, we have open sets in N, that's what this guy is right here, and we have this map F inverse. And if we ask, is this set over here, if we ask if it's open, we'll get an answer. It'll say yes or no. I mean, of course, if it's open, the answer is always yes. And then it'll take it to sets in N. 
And then we can ask if that set is open also. If the answer is always yes, then this map is continuous. The map F inverse carries um, open sets on M to open sets in M. That's what continuous means. It, F inverse carries the topological structure on N over to M. My my 